Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number eight in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Python or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. That would be straight black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, no creamer, none needed. You guys have got to understand, it is caffeine that fuels the engineering world. Like, let me give you an, an analogy. Jet fuel is to jet engines as caffeine is to engineers. If you don't know that by now, it's time that you've learned it. Many a night, I've worked all night on a project and the whole team in there working into the wee hours of the morning. It was caffeine that kept us going. And I'm also going to need you to learn some cool new stuff. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number seven. And so I'm going to kind of give you my solution. How many of you guys <clears throat> were able to do this homework? If you were able to do the homework, leave a comment down below. I am legend. Or if you weren't able to do it, you could indicate that maybe you fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. All right. I'm also going to need you to get out your Visual Studio Code. And as you're getting out your Visual Studio Code, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little coffee down the wrong pipe there. You guys that are not helping out yet, look in the description down below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's get going on the solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number seven. And this was associated with compound conditionals inside of an if. And what your assignment was, was to get a number from the user and then tell the user <clears throat> that it's one of five things. It's either positive, negative, it's positive, e I mean, <laughs> positive, negative, that's not going to happen. It's positive and even, it is positive and odd, it is negative and even, it is negative and odd, or it is zero. And so you take a number and then you tell the user which one of those five categories that it fits into. <clears throat> In order to do this, I should probably scoot out of your way. Nothing make, makes you guys matter than me coding in my big old head, gargantuan head in front of the code view. So I try to be very mindful to make sure you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> We're going to come over to Python files. We are going to create a new uh, program, and I think I am going to call it compound conditional and uh, conditional, and this is the second one of these, and then dot .py. The dot .py is kind of important, and boom! <clears throat> we have a fresh new program here just waiting to be written. A fresh new program just waiting to be written. So let's jump in and do that. Hey, I also realized something that's going to help you see the code. I can come over here and with this, I can turn off that file viewer and you really don't need the file browser while you're coding so you can turn it off or if you need it in a minute, you can turn it back on and that will allow us <clears throat> to have a little bit bigger window to code in. So what was it? You want to get a number from a user. So we're going to call it my num would be a good variable name. And then what uh, what are we going to do? It's a number. So we got to make sure we float that input and we open up and then we get an input from the keyboard and then we give it our prompt. And please, please be polite. We have enough rudeness in the world. When we program, let's have our program be an exemplary case of politeness. So we will say, 
please <clears throat> input your number. And then for good formatting, we'll put a colon and a space, and that way the answer doesn't jam into the question. Okay, now we've got the number. And so just with the number, we can figure out if it's greater than zero, if it is equal to zero, if it's less than zero. But we've got this little business of the even odd. And how do we do that? Well, we take a mod two. The mod is the remainder. And so if we take any number and if we mod two, if it's an even number, the remainder will be zero. If it's an odd number, the remainder will be one. So we need to find that remainder. And that remainder is my my num and it is modded that is the little percent sign it is modded with two okay <clears throat> so now at this point i have two things i've got my number and i've got the remainder after it is modded with two okay and so now what i can say is if and then i have my num my num is greater than zero <clears throat> and then what's the word and and remainder equal 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 zero then what would this be this would be an even positive number right and so that was case one you're going to print you have you have an even pos positive number number. Okay, now I'm going to say if my num is greater than zero and the remainder equal equal one. Again, the number one coding mistake that I see people make, one of the biggest ones is you get in a hurry and you forget that when you're doing a conditional, you got to use the old double equal, the old double equal. And then we're going to put this here and then I'm going to say print. I have a what? I have a what? You have an odd, odd positive number. Okay. Then we should do the negative cases. And so that would be if my num is less than zero and remainder equal equals zero. What is this going to be? Ah, that was not good. Where did that nonsense come from? Ah, I must have missed my colon. Okay, print. We are going to print. <clears throat> We're going to print what? Your or you have, and we've got to kind of keep our case business. This is kind of headline case where you. Uh, capitalize the first letter of important words. You, Yoey, what is that nonsense? You have, and that would be even negative number. And you can still see that, right? You can see that. Okay. What else do we have? If <clears throat> my num is less than zero and remainder equal equal one what is that going to be you in that case print you have an odd negative number and then finally what we have to say is if my num equal equal zero. That one is just if it's zero, it's zero. And in that case, you say print your number is zero. Because some people get really worked up about this business about whether zero is even or odd or positive or negative. And so we don't want to open that can of worms. We're just going to say zero is zero. And we're not going to try to get into a big debate with people over that. Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's come up here and let's run this program. Please input your number. Well, let's try five. And it says you have an odd positive number. Uh-huh. Boom. Okay. Let's play again. And then we're going to go six. You have an even positive number. 
Yes. The professional football players celebrate their successes with the double th uh, chest bump. I think as engineers, we are equally deserving of the double chest bump for our accomplishments because actually probably I would say programming is a lot more important than football, but that's just me. Okay, but I digress. Let's run this baby again. <clears throat> this time we are going to say, uh, okay, we did the uh, positive numbers. Now we're going to do a minus four. You have an even negative number. Uh-huh, we got that one. And now we're going to run it again. And we are going to put minus five. And you have an odd negative number. That looks good. And then the big finale, we're going to put in a zero. And it says your number is zero. Boom. Okay, so that is that little assignment. Man, guys, uh, this is lesson number eight. You've learned a lot already. You're ready to get in there and start coding, right? You understand arrays. You understand your basic math operators. You you understand how to get input from the user from the keyboard. You understand how to do simple if statements. You understand how to do if statements with conditionals. We did the arrays. We understand the difference between ints, floats, and strings. We've done quite a bit of work. And so that is really good. All right. You guys that have followed along on my Arduino series of lessons, you know another just really core fundamental building block is the old for loop. And that's what we're going to do in next week's lesson. We're going to learn how for loops work in Arduino. You're going to be kind of familiar with it if you took the Arduino lessons, but never fear if you've never programmed before. I'm assuming you, you don't know anything. I'll show you from scratch how the for loops work. And then <clears throat> I'll show you specifically how the for loops work in Python. Now I want to warn you, it's a little different than Arduino. And at first it's like, eh, I don't like this. But then if you really see why Python does it that way, you will come to love the Python for loop. Okay, guys, if you like this lesson, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to that channel. When you hit subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notifications when new videos are released. And then if you haven't done this already, make sure that you're sharing these lessons with other people because we need more people doing useful things and less people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Okay, this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.